Okay, so setting our spirit free. By doing exercises of certain types, we spoke about qigong, um, energy practices, meditations. I believe the heart is uh, the source of creativity as well. Like the universe is very creative, isn't it? How it just creates things. And within us, in our senses, we also have that ability. So these are just some of the practices uh, that I've compiled that we can use to open up the heart even more. So my girlfriend, she does Nia, which is like a, a wonderful combination of Qigong, jazz dance, and it's called it was dance for Now I Am. And it's all about setting your spirit free. And they have a thing where they have you follow a routine and you're just doing this uh, and doing different movements. You're doing a lot of energy practices, moving your things. A bit like stood up yoga, but it's very fast and it's wonderful. I don't know if you've heard of Nia. Have you heard of Nia? Okay. Uh, but there's one point within that routine where they go, okay, free dance. And you have about 30 seconds to do what the hell you want. And you're just like this. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, there's no rules. You can do what you want. And my girlfriend went on a uh, training course for about a week. She did Nia, and she was having out-of-body experiences effortlessly every night. And she never does it. She never does this. She never practices any techniques, anything. What she's doing is she's setting her spirit free. She's not putting herself in the box of confinement, of, of fear, of doubt. She loves herself. Moving that energy around. Your meridians are just flowing with energy. And they're just complementing each other. She's having a great time. Obviously, Tai Chi is more of a... I'd say more of a passive kind of way you're, you're allowing. I do a lot of Qigong, so it's a bit different to Tai Chi. Um, and this guy at the top, he is painting <laughs> on water. That's actually a plate of water, and he drops in certain oils. He's been creative. Just had a download in my ear. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically, he's also expressing himself that way, you know, creatively. So it's amazing, right? Watch in a minute, it just gets so good, but it takes about 10 minutes. <laughs> but it's really good. He'll do something in a minute. I mean, I know that it's circles, right? It's, it's some kind of oil. I don't know. This, this is really fun, right? Watch this, right? You ready? It's, about, it's really shallow, I think. It looks quite shallow. It's not going to work well when it puts up in the wall. That would be my favorite bit, I think. And he takes his time, you know. Oh, he's going to put the, the other bit in there. Okay, I'll count to you. So if you don't do an energy practice of, of any kind, I, I, I really do recommend it. It does um, perfect, well, it makes you more healthy, makes you more happy, more joyous. Look how happy they are. Um, whatever it may be. I mean, you don't have to dance around like this. You could just find some kind of form of creativity. Look at that. Fantastic. In heart shapes as well. <laughs> So set your spirit free, and uh, I find that just by not, you know, being confined in a, a box, just just let it out. And that's what Leanne told me, my spirit guy. She says you got to let your heart sing. Just that's another form, you know, creativity is singing, and it's, you're allowing the, the the spirit to express itself. Don't let the mind confine it. Oh. Wow, no, that's really. pretty trippy. Yeah. <laughs> Could the lights just up a fraction? Yeah. So it's almost like it's the dark that teaches you how to enjoy a sort of light. So that's again integrating with the dark. Well, there isn't one without the other. Yeah. So yes. So just the thing singing in dreams. It sounds nice, but you don't have to move your vocal cords. So I mean, it's it's very strange because the problem with Singing is to really not just to know the truth, but to get it out by all these movements of the sound. Well, she was referring to for me to express myself in waking reality, to then have the benefit of me expressing myself and using the heart. So she was saying, just remind me, you know, sing in waking reality. You can sing, I think, in, in a lucid dream. I've, I've done it before, but yeah, do you do that? Yeah. And do, do you sound good? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I sound so free, and other times I get. Like issues, like I'm like, oh my god, this is mm. But yeah, sometimes I sound lazy. It's so the thing is, no one, no, <laughs> the strange thing is, no one can hear it. So you know, I'd like to sing and everyone. Oh right, yeah, but you can just yeah, yeah. yeah. just just 
Yeah. Imagine a huge audience, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they'll go Phew, just appear in front of you. You know what's interesting? My friend was going to people know who were doing the youth dance uh, in ceremonies. He found that after a while, their voices would improve. Right. It's almost as if like the medicine was giving them something back and allowed them to. Because what you traditionally see a lot of people take by hospice, they tend to become very musical mm. and they start to learn instruments and they can't teach them the instruments in, 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 in the space while they're in ceremony. And it's like so many people I've seen just suddenly start to flourish creatively because their hearts have been opened. I they love start that. to sing in beautiful voices and you can't do them so and I was never able to sing before. I had a terrible voice. I yeah. I think I think everyone can sing. You just need yeah. to just open, just yeah. open it up. Um, so another way we can open up our hearts is by calling upon an archangel called Shamuel or Kamuel uh, of pure unconditional. He represents pure unconditional love. Uh, whether or not you don't really buy into it or angels or guardian angels, that's fine. But just try it, experiment. Give it a go, and just in your meditative state or at night, just before you sleep, call upon the Archangel Shamuel, and he will help you open up your heart even more. Um, here he is. Because there are seven, ironically seven, the seven chakras or major centers, and the seven archangels. Each one represent different aspects that you can that you can call upon. Um, so for Mar uh, Archangel Michael or Michael is um, it's for strength and to get past those blocks uh, with your waking reality. Apparently, in the old days, they used to sleep with pillows full of lavender. Dream pillows. Yeah, dream pillows. Yeah, you can put mugwort in it and all sorts. Yeah, and, uh, make one tonight. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. And then also, you know, what you're wearing in the daytime corresponds to what you subconsciously feel at that time about your chakras, or maybe what you feel that you should work on, or what you feel on that day corresponds to your chakras. So I'm wearing green, it represents the heart. I actually bought this from H&M today, so I'm kind of cheating. <laughs> but maybe, like, if you wore pink, you see, maybe you subconsciously chose that, thinking... Until about a year ago, I started to lose light Right. <laughs> Emotional dream builder. I just want to explain this uh, quick story and then we're going to have to quickly move on to some exercises. Um, this is really amazing. I had an SGLD experience but in waking reality. SGL SGLD, spirit guided lucid dreaming. Um, but I call it SGLD. Um, my spirit guide decided to show himself in, phys in, in, in form in the waking reality in this world, to me, for the first time. And usually it's always in the lucid dream when I meet him. Um, but this time it was quite surreal. And if you follow my blog on alwayslucid.com, um, this is another reason for him showing himself to teach me more about the heart. See, it's all connected. So one night I was sleeping in my bed, and then I woke up randomly, just as you do, without any alarm clock. Something was calling me, I didn't know what. And then I was approached by this guy. <laughs> this is my bed. I took a photograph. This guy is obviously superimposed. It's not the real superhero. Yeah. <laughs> so Jesus Christ, see with that, you know. Uh, but a bit of Photoshop, you know, a bit of blurring, it, it works. Um, but this is my bedroom. This is what I look at every night. And I've got these two curtains. He literally just show, just showed himself within about five seconds in front of me. And it was, I was just, I was almost in fear. I was like, wow, what is that? Wow. This is, you know, cold sweat just running down my face. Um, and these orbs of energy are actually real. Can you see these circles on the curtains on the left and right? These orbs were actually taken the day after um, and they represent energy, I think, still accumulating in the bedroom from this experience. It lasted, about, it lasted for about five seconds. Um, he put his arms out and then I just knew it was a paranormal experience and I've had many before, but nothing is quite as vivid as this. Um, and I, I said telepathically, I said, who are you? And he says, I'm your spirit guide. And I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> thanks. And then he, then he just faded away. And then I was just so energized. You know, we're talking about dream energy and chi and all that. I was so vibrating with, oh my God, was it Jesus? Maybe it wasn't Jesus. Who was it? <laughs> I was thinking all these crazy things. And, you know, amazing. But I, telepathically, he told me it, it was my spirit guide. 
Uh, and then I was just so, I couldn't get to sleep for about an hour or two hours, it kind of went on. I was just, uh, and then all of a sudden, I eventually fell asleep. And I felt so much joy and gratitude, by the way. I felt, wow, thank you. I just kept saying thank you for giving me this amazing experience to actually see this and to actually to experience that. It's like another level of lucid dreaming for me, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I slipped into an OBE with him pulling me out. And I didn't do any technique that night, did nothing. He basically just showed himself. And because I was so energized with the, what I was seeing, it created an emotional resonance, going back to the feeling and the, and the emotional bottom bit. So what I'm getting at is, because I was so emotionally feeling gratitude and love and all, that, all those amazing things, it manifested into an out-of-body experience, a highly vivid out-of-body experience without any technique. Nothing. No intention, no nothing. Because I, the last thought I had was, oh my God, that was an amazing experience. How paranormal. And then it sort of bled into my awareness. Can you give any explanation why you came to that form? Did you set any tension beforehand? Or well, then, or from the beginning of January, I went on a mission to find out more about the heart. And then I had those genes from, uh, from Leanne showing me the heart. And then uh, I think it was about a couple of months after, he showed up. And it was almost like it was a way of teaching me that the emotional resonance that I created within me can actually bring on some kind of reality. It's, it's, it's how you want to manifest things. Um, and also, this reality is not as solid as you think it is. It's very fluid. It really is. It's, I mean, it may look really solid, right? And you can't walk through the wall. But it is another dream. And to see entities, it's just amazing. Um, whether you buy into that, I don't know, but um, for me it was very much so real. And you can read the full story, it's a two-part um, blog I did on my website, part one and two. Nick, when you have this dream, do you find that when you wake up you feel energized? Yes, this yes. This seems to be quite a common vibe for us, and certainly I've had these situations where I've woken up. I love it. I've gone for a run and just thought, wow, I feel amazing, but mm. it seems interesting that we'll be conversed, because we've been talking about chi earlier, that if you lose Stability and because lack of energy, to wake up, feeling energized, it's going to be contrary to that. Yeah, because the first thing many people would always say, like, oh, I have to get up at 4 a.m., do a wake back to bed method, stay up for 40 minutes, I'm going to be tired in the morning. I'm like, no, you won't. Like, because I just, I just feel so energized the next day. If I've had a lucid dream, I feel like my mind's had a good old. Exercise, you know, you can feel your brain's almost exercised, right? I don't know. It's, it's, do you ever get that sensation? I can't describe it. I a situation where um, I, had this, like, I can't get to sleep. It's like two, three in the morning. I get to sleep, say, half past three. I wake up. I, I have a lucid dream. I wake up and it's like four or ten. You know, I, I have, have like a 20 minute, 10 minute lucid dream only. And I'm, I feel like I've had 12 hours sleep or something, literally. Yeah. So there, there must be something in that you're going through. In the time, time, time because is. you're buzzing because it's so clear <laughs> and, met, and you're just like Maybe mind blown. Like, that was so, so profound. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're, then you run a you're buzzing for a whole week off, you know, one experience. Mm. You, you're bringing in this energy back, you know, yeah. it's mirrored, it's, well, it's well, beautiful. Yeah. I've never heard a good explanation. But I have been, mm. I've had like, perhaps really whole nights of lucid dreaming and out of body. I've had to come back. I wonder if it was because I literally did, didn't have any of that sort of reparative, well, you know, that kind yeah, of sleep. I was just aware for the entire night, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So it's only been a power, like 10 minutes, right? Can have, you know, if you're feeling a bit sleepy, like 10 minutes of power, that can boost you for another five or six hours. Yeah, so mm. uh, it makes sense. If you don't have any of that. I had quite a profound experience one time during my early stages. I uh, managed to become lucid, and then I saw a girl. And she was just right there, this face, and I was like, okay. And I said, do you know you are actually dreaming right now? I just said it into her eyes. And all of a sudden, her face started to shift, and she was like, what, what? And it sort of fluctuated. It just looked weird. And then all of a sudden, I bounced back to my, to my physical body, what felt like it. And then I felt electrical uh, charges across my brain, going across both hemispheres, like electric. It felt like electric. Going, because I managed to tell this girl that she was in the dream, but 
I haven't managed to get this sensation back, but it's almost like it, it triggered something. So it, it, you can bring this energy back, and you are unlocking. And whether that's unlocking or if it's bringing it back, I don't know. However, which way you want to look at it. Maybe it's just like you're having uh, your energy, but it's just like literally a massive burst of electrical energy, which makes your whole energy body just feel more volatilized. And so the body parts just really like, oh, this feels great. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just, you know, it's like an electrical shock to the system. So, yeah. And with all the prana that you've collected. Yeah. yeah. Maybe in that state, you don't need so much, it doesn't need that long. Yeah. Um, so, I love that picture. This is like uh, an astral realm. This is beautiful. <laughs> so, I think we've got 10 minutes. I think we're just going to. I do have other slides here. I'm just going to have to speed this up. Um, so, it's a psychic opening of the heart. The heart is extremely clairvoyant, more so than the brain. And then you do perceive, and, and on, a cognitive, on a cognitive sense, um, higher awareness because you're opening up this heart. So when you start really focusing on your heart every day, you'll find that you become more telepathic, more sensitive to people's energies. No, I'm joking. Okay, so in my book, I talk about mirrored awakenings, which basically means, okay, it's basically a mirror. This is how I interpret it. Um, synchronicities that happen in your life, like number sequences. Do you ever see there's like five, 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 two, 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 um, or, or seeing something in your dream two days before, as a, as a, I don't know, a cat, uh, and it was white with a black spot, and and then in your waking reality, you actually do see it, the same cat. Is your yeah, and then it triggers something. It's like synchronicities. Yeah. So, so basically, the more I became more aware of these um, sequences, especially number sequences, I have a whole language now that I speak to with my guide, so we keep this tight, lucid net in this reality. Uh, he talks me through numbers, and it's amazing. I could go on for hours talking about his numbers. Um, but I see it as a mirror because your higher self says, oh, say you split this uh, image here, your higher self or oh, spirit guide is on one side, and you're on this side in physical reality. He's a part of you, so you are one, essentially. And you're just you're sending out, he's sending out these synchronicities and number sequences, or to me, like I experience them, um, to make me more aware in this reality. So to give you an example, um, I call it SG number system, <laughs> or mirrored awakening. Um, I've seen a lot of eights throughout my whole life, just eight, 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 eight. And it's the main number that relates to uh, Clifftop, my spirit guide, the male spirit guide. Um, when I say I see a lot of, let me just talk about that a bit more. Um, OK, so you go to a number eight house, you get on the number eight bus. You check your watch, and then it suddenly turns on the second as you look at the watch, 108. Like, this happens to me every single day because I'm drawing more awareness to these numbers. I see a lot of two twos and five fives, and each one relates to numerology, and um, I actually have a personalized number system that we have. So now we're talking through numbers, and it makes me more lucid in this reality because of it. Does anyone else have these do you notice these yeah. really strange numbers like four, 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 five, five, five? I think it's really twos, two, 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 and right. Yeah. Always twos, right? So my theory is this, right? I'm just going to say if you, if you, if there is a number in particular that you've always had in your life, and you think well, some people call it a lucky number. I think this is a mirrored awakening from your guide or from a higher aspect of yourself, giving you, uh, just trying to ignite some interest in it, so then it makes you want to find out more, to then grow. Evolve even more and open yourself up more psychically. This can make you more psychic, I think. Um, five, five, five. I find for me it's much easier to do and periods of time a lot. Um, yeah. Days, weeks, and months. It's just because sometimes doing readings, you can see a number which is quite prevalent in your life, like hearing a number. Right. Um, it always turns out to be periods of time. Because you can, you can perceive it, haven't you? Yeah, because when I do a lot of, um, well, when I'm doing my tarot readings, I have an iPhone with the clock, but I need the seconds to be always going because it's in the moment. And as I have this intuitive feeling of some <coughs> sensation, I then look and then it tells me a number which then I decode as mm. a yes or a no or him telling me something. Like five for five means lesson well learned. So if I've done something wrong and then I learned a lesson in my head, like, oh yeah, I then look at the clock, five, five, five. So if you say that the number system is highly personal, that you cannot really 
well, it might be meaning to you, it might be quite, quite, quite to me. Might be to <coughs> exactly, yeah. Well, that's why I have my own personalized system. Uh, some relate to uh, like angelnumbers.com, this, this, that. Um, but he's showing me numbers now. And what's really interesting is I have another theory, <laughs> going out a lot of theories, that I think eight represents Cliftoff. And I think there's five members, and Leanne is number 14. And she shows me 14s all the time. And it's, it's hard to make um, what I'm talking about in, come into this reality because it's, we're talking about psychic connection. We're talking about something you can't see, something that's invisible. So it's intuitive feeling. I can't tell you, I can try and tell you logically what I'm feeling, but unless you're experiencing yourself, how can you, you know? Yes. You can't not. I mean, you must be able to win. You must be able to create a dream where you know what's going to happen in your dream because you're creating it. So you be careful when you think of it. But, but this is the most mirror. People don't play around mm. psychically in their work. I mean, I'm a mm. very skeptic, but I, I never think of I'm a ghost in my dream. But I can complete all psychic phenomena. I can know if I dream of you. I can know what you're thinking. You know. <laughs> <laughs> And there's no reason not to. But I, I see them as one, though. Like, the more psychic stuff I do in that realm, the mirror is, you know what I mean? You bring it back, as we were talking about. The emotions and the inspiration. Yeah, because that crosses the dream barrier. You can't bring yeah. anything with you from a dream. You can't carry a tiniest thing with you. That's not an object. No. The emotions <laughs> and not information move across the barrier between dream and wake. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a horrible dream, you might have a horrible day, and if you have a horrible day, you might have a horrible dream, they go straight yeah. to the Someone mentioned, I think, on Conscious Explorers, a fantastic topic. Was it you, John? I can't remember. Um, someone was saying that when you bring back a memory, do those memories then, you know, you think, oh, hang on, I've been down this road, and you actually had dreamt of that road, um, and, you, and those memories that you had in the dream now are replacing your, your physical memories. Did anyone else read this? So then it almost becomes like, okay, so, because the, they're so real in the lucid world, right, the memories. So now they're obviously going to bleed over, and then you can't actually differentiate which is which, which memory was in the physical and which was in the dream world. Yeah. And people think, oh, you know, but I think that's great. This is what we want. We want to get rid of this wall. It's, it's not like separate. Yeah, and sometimes you wake up with emotions, like, I don't know if you get angry at someone in your dream, when you wake up, you kind of feel that. You feel like you want to shout at the person and you need a moment to like calm down. Yeah. And then you go, no, like it hasn't happened. And then the next day. Yeah, sometimes it's just like it gets back to you actually when you wake up. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, my girlfriend said that she woke up one day again. Oh, we were arguing all night in our dreams. And then she's in a bad mood with me all day. <laughs> I was like, I've done nothing wrong. Oh, in place. And if you do, if you are interested in these numbers, the. Um, my advice would be, if you are wanting to get some kind of advice and a way of having it, it's like a guidance tool within this reality. It really is when you start going into it. Just start focusing on the numbers even more and logging each one. And what do they actually mean to you? And that's a way of having and creating a language of numbers. It's also a good reality check as well. It's a really good reality check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is another thing that they've introduced. They mean my guides. So when I see minutes and um, the seconds, as I'm having that, feeling of, oh, I need to check, I check, and it says 32, 32, so double figures. I then go on to, uh, to find out what the I Ching is on 32, and it's completely relevant to how I was feeling about that issue in my head, within the minute and the seconds, as they, as they turn. So as you're looking, basically, as you check. Uh, if you are interested in the I Ching, uh, go to a website called divination.com. They have a really great way of describing. So if you type in... Even if you just type in uh, the number, so 34, meaning, in top of Google, you'll see in the top three, it'll have divination.com meaning. And it's just the best yeah. one to understand. Sure. There's, there's always an app. Go on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nick, can you remember what three is? Uh, creation. So you've got the seed, oh, no, the male, the female, and the baby, which is your creation. Okay. Trinity, isn't it? Okay. 
could be the heart again, creation. <laughs> it's uh, it can be whatever you want it to be, but at the same time, they they have said that it's about uh, universal uh, oneness. It could be like one one zero one 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 zero one zero zero one. Um, universal oneness, and um, it's a good vibe. It's a yes, I find. But two to two is more of a yes to me. It's a direct yes. Um, yeah, I've got it here. So I mean, you ha you're gonna have to play. I mean, it's taken me about three years to get this language, and these are only just some of them, by the way. I've got a whole heap of other ones, um, but this one, the two sets of the double figures relate to the I Ching is probably because I wanted it to be that way. So now I've got another source of information. <laughs> it's great. So I think you can create anything. And like you said, you know, it's only relevant to the, to, the, to the dreamer. But there will be numbers that are coming up, I think, already that you're probably not aware of. Just as you're walking around, look around at every number that's around you. There's thousands. It really, like, when I'm on the motorway, I look at uh, number plates. There's a, I'm having a great conversation with my guide <laughs> through numbers, looking at all these different cars going past. Oh, wow, OK, OK. Because he knows that I've got this dialogue in my head about things that I'm working on. Um, and then you see, the, you see the number, and it's like, OK. It's really fascinating. Really, really oh really? For, well, yeah, like really science, yeah. Well, this is the next point. So, oh my God, I'm so glad you said that. Because look, way waking symbols. Mm -hmm. So, not only do we have symbols in our dreams, we have waking symbols in this reality. David, we spoke about this yesterday. How there's so much magic in this reality right now. Mm -hmm. It is amazing to be lucid, but it's also amazing to be here. There's not one that's better than the other. And this is this is amazing. This actually happened to me about well, actually, when I started working on my heart, I noticed that with the symbols, you can they actually mean everything. And you know the dream symbol dictionaries you have. There's many online, isn't there, right? Um, whatever object means something to you psychically, whatever you perceive it to be, like oh, that was a bit strange. Something that stood out. Just go on the dictionary online and type in that particular object, and I bet you it relates to you in some way that you can interpret that. It's very interesting. Mimi, okay. There's dreammoods.com as well. But. Yeah. And we're getting to the, the end of this. So here we go. So objects is one of them. Shapes and colors is a very big one. Start noticing everything in this reality, you know, seeing all the different shapes and colors. Like brown is quite you know, relevant right here, right? So, and we're kind of sharing the same symbol, which is interesting. Um, emotions. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> During a conversation. Let me just repeat that last time. I'll see. Yeah, we're good. So basically, the symbols that you find in your lucid dreams, there's going to be emotions, there's going to be objects, there's going to be shapes and colors. You're going to be in conversations with other people, I find. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know your, your lucid dream, but if you do, then. These are prevalent. I, why not? Can it be just the same in this as another type of dream? We keep saying this thing like, oh, it's another dream. It's a, it is all a dream. But are we just saying it as a catchphrase? Or do we really believe this is another dream? No physical energy believes things in a, in a lucid dream. Mm. I think all our faith, everything. Like the paints, you yeah. know. In this world, we, we interfere with other things if we want to move them around. So you can't. Make this room into the form of a, a, a three. But it's not you that's moving them. It's the universal source that's giving you these objects. And the more focus that you place on what I'm being receptive to receiving this, I find that they just keep on folding. Ah, I, I, so it's synchronicity. You mean that you'll, you'll be pulled towards a three, even though uh, there might be six and eight hidden under the carpet. Yeah, this is where the intuitive, clairvoyant part of you will. It's, it's a feeling. It's not just like, okay, so now I know to be looking for objects. It's not like so much you're looking. It's more about, okay, I'm getting this emotion about, what is that? And something will stand out, or I have this feeling to check my watch and yes, see. I see what you mean. It's, it's intuitive, yeah. Um, I had a frog randomly be at my uh, windowsill one time. And I was like, why is there a frog on the windowsill? So random. I'm on a, I live like nearly on a motorway. There's a frog. And it's good luck. A frog is a symbol for good luck and fortune and prosperity. Yeah. Okay. In traditional shamanism, you can think about which way the wind is blowing at a certain moment. 
Ouais. Et donc, moi, je suis avec les hommes de personnes qui me donnent ce like. Donc, tout ce qui est un peu magic, tu veux que tu me dises, 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 tu veux que Oh, weather conditions is another one, big one. But it's also, yeah, I really need that bottom bit. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, it's like a dream. <laughs> What does it say? It's a reality check. This is great. I'm just going to stay here for a while. Yeah, so it's, how you, so it's also how the perceiver perceives that thing. What does it mean to you, which answers your question. Can I ask a question? Specific question. Please. We haven't got two minutes. No, I'm joking. Okay. So, <laughs> I was in a dream. I was thinking of something to do. I, I dreamed of winning lottery numbers. Okay. Suddenly, I saw in front of me a lace cloth. I've never had that before. You know, like when you have the color blind test, these num numbers came out of nothing and were extremely clear. Now, I, I don't know. I mean, of course, I had the motivation. Wow, well, I want to see if it works. It was not money. But I know the numbers that came up. I, I don't know why they came up. It was five. They came up very, very striking. Right. It just stood out. And because I, I was motivated by financial interest, I really paid attention. So I had a, a, a five and ten and ten and twenty, twelve and fourteen. You know, I had the six right. numbers just. Standing up, got it. Now, obviously, I, I, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> we'll split it 50 50. Right, right. <laughs> so, did you, did you, know, you? I just don't know anything so important about those numbers. But I mean, my unconscious obviously, I provoked it. I want to see the lottery numbers just to, mm. I don't believe so much in clairvoyance, but I, wow, I'd like to do it. So I got all these numbers coming out. I've never seen numbers like that come out so clear to me. It's just such a strange mm. way. And really, we have that in hell. And so? so? What does the, <laughs> as they want to write lottery numbers, I'm puzzled, what do they mean? Did Why did you buy a lottery? But yeah, did you buy a lottery? Yeah, That's what I want to ask. Did you buy the numbers? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The Dennis, yeah. He didn't set the intention to which lottery in which time. Ah. That's true, actually. Yeah, one yeah, final detail. Yeah, yeah, maybe it could have been spiritual wealth, or maybe it could have been a numerology number. Of the 5, 10, 12, 14, 20, then. Do you think you, it's a language? You've actually seen those be drawn on the lottery some, at some point in your life. I mean, obviously, they come up, I'm not so. Here, and then you've had a dream I think of those really numbers. Specific enough. The universe wants specific information. If you give it approximations in there and stuff, the universe will just try to guess. So, you, because mm. you've asked for a lottery without all the information you've given, it's just going to give you numbers for a lottery. Yeah, you, haven't which one, so then, you know what's going to happen. It was a question when I, when I was in the group, the guy did a search for me, yeah. and uh, I was very surprised the way it came out, because I mean, I was um, getting right, so I'm getting that right. That's mm -hmm. why I'm also so my question is, is, I did want, it was my intention when I, I asked was, in my dream, the next one coming up, obviously, I'm still waiting. But I mean, I was surprised, what else would it mean if it wasn't lovely? Mm. Well, what else do numbers mean to you? That is the question. As as opposed to numbers for calculating uh, mathematics and lottery I numbers. Can't be sure. I can't be sure. That's, that's I can't be sure. Well, it yeah. kind of say something else. Possibly. I mean, it's. Have you checked anything on three things? No, obviously. If you think the numbers are going to come up, then you think you come up with that six. So, did you have your six numbers then? The entire number? I had the entire no, selection. No, I had six of the seven, but I mean, I checked in the lottery. It didn't, the six didn't of the seven. Really come up. You see, you can, you can interpret it in many ways, like six of the seven, seven chakras. You, you got the six, but you didn't get the seven. Why have you not got the seven chakra? You know, or you get numerology. Yeah, no. But also, you're anyway. skeptical, so it could just be saying, oh. all the random numbers that aren't going to work exactly what you believe. 
I was very Okay, so um, have we got time for a hot towel exercise? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there's a few things we can do. Which is about what? Good luck for gambling and just increasing wealth in general. Right. Stupid. Go. Okay, guys. So, <laughs> if we can all just uh, stand up, and then um, we're going to do a little bit of qigong, which is like an energy practice. Um, and okay, so yeah, I just couldn't find the right one, and he's like, <laughs> he's having a symptom, I think. So, oh, yeah. David, you want to join the circle? Yeah. yeah. And do we, if we go, yeah, get together in a circle. That's nice. Okay. And as we do this, going back to what you said before, which was coming together, and we are actually expanding together as well at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, you can just on the camera, you go, <laughs> and jumps back there. It's okay. No, it's cool. If you, no, it's just fine. It's fine. It's cool. It, forget that. It's fine. Okay. So, if you want to just bend your knees slightly. <coughs> Actually, space out a little bit as well. Yeah, mind that cable. <laughs> so it's bending these slightly, you know, a little bit. It's very relaxed. So then your spine is straight, so like this. It looks a bit silly, right? But uh, it's because you, 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 your spine needs to be straight. Don't, I mean, if you do a bit much, it looks like you're doing something else. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. So just a little bit, and then... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's really silly. Okay, and now we're going to just rub our hands together really vigorously, get that energy moving. And go through the fingers, get that chi, which is the hands are the strongest uh, parts of the body which has the chi. Or you can feel it heating up and tap the butt, tap it, tap up your arms on the inside of the arms. The numbers are syncing up, nice. So you're raising the vibration, that's good. <laughs> I, this is not Qigong, I just want to make it look silly. Alright. <laughs> it's going on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, and then shake it up. Alright, here we go. So, I want you to just now get your hands quite relaxed, fingers, uh, fingers spread apart. Um, and then just close your eyes. I want to put, you, uh, put your attention in between your hands. Put your focus there. And breathe. Take some deep breaths. Clear that mind. You may feel a tingling as well. That's the chi, because we woke it up. Now what I want you to do is slowly push in your hands and come back out like a bubble of energy in between your hands. Do it really slowly. The slower, the better. You may feel some kind of magnetism almost. Just contract and expand. Okay, now 
take your hands out a little bit further and make a bigger ball of energy slowly wider a bit wider okay now go back in and then back out back in again slowly we're strengthening the chi between our hands Okay, now what I want to do is open your eyes slightly so you can see me. You open your eyes and then now I want you to just do this about this distance away from you. Nice and relaxed, elbows down. Be relaxed. You may feel your solar plexus tingling a little bit. I want to bring your hands up really slowly and we're going to put them parallel where our heart chakra is. So rise your hands up, up, and just stop there at the chest. If your legs are feeling a bit tingly, don't worry. You're creating more energy because you're still. This is normal. Focus on this, the center of your chest and your heartbeat. Now contract, go out a little bit and back in again. Out and back in again. The energy is expanding. Let's go out a bit more. In. Back in again. Smile as well. Let's be in our hearts. Out. In again. Let's go wider. Let's really expand this heart chakra. Out. Out. That's it. And just remain there for a second. Integrate. Now back in slowly. Be at peace with it. Once you return, go back out like a wave on the ocean. Breathe in, breathe out. As you go out, let's breathe in. And then release as you go back in. And once again, breathe in and out. Expand those lungs. And then back in. You may feel the tingling even more now. Let's keep going. Breathe in. And now. Now let's remain close to our chest for a moment. Be receptive to the sensation. Now let's bring our hands a little bit down, back to our solar plexus, or just where the uh, belly button is, just opposite there. And now we're going to place, boys will put their left hand first on their belly button and their right hand over. Girls, you'll be opposite. Girls will put their right hand on their belly button, left hand on top. Okay, and we're going to rest that firmly on our belly buttons, which is the lower dent here. This is where we store our energy, the battery for the body. And now we're going to put from right foot to left, we're now going to close the connection and let your ankles touch and just remain stood straight.
and smile. When you're ready, just open your eyes and shake it off. Walk around. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Namaste. Thank you.